Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon, back with a quick tutorial on how you can turn your Astro 3.0 or actually also Astro 2.0 application into a native mobile app because Astro 3.0 dropped this week and I made a little tweet that got actually quite a lot of attention. Uh, I just want to show you how you quickly can achieve the same result for your own Astro page using Capacitor. That's what we're going to use. Yes, Capacitor is not only used with Ionic and uh, those tools, you can use it pretty much everywhere. So let's do this. Let's go through the commands that we need to get started. I also wanted to show you this setup just because the, the setup for Astro Project is just unbelievable great. I will just follow along. Uh, yes, I want to install all the dependencies because the colors and everything they did in here, that's like really, really good. Um, I picked, as you can see, the block template. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. I will stick to mostly the default settings, but it actually doesn't really matter. So let's continue when the project is ready. All right, so here's the app. I can now go ahead with npm run dev that should bring up the live reload of Astro new on port 4321. I really like that. And this is the default block setup. So we got some pages, really cool, great thing to get started. And now we want to turn this into a native mobile application using Capacitor. So let's see how to do it we can install Capacitor to our web app. And for that, let's first run those two commands, which will simply install the Capacitor core package. Um, so Capacitor core and the Capacitor CLI, so we can uh, locally execute some commands of the Capacitor CLI. Once we got that, we can run npx cap in it. So that is, as you can see, using our local Capacitor CLI. And we'll ask a few questions like what should be the name? I will just stick to the default so you don't have to change anything here. The package ID is relevant once you go really for the iOS and Android app store. But at this point for testing, you can just keep it like it is. However, this part is actually important because the web asset directory is where Capacitor will look for the files of your web build. And with Astro, that's going to be the dist folder. So make sure you're not using www, make sure you change it to this folder. Okay, at this point, we can install the native platforms by first of all, adding Capacitor Android and then Capacitor iOS. And once we got that, we can actually add them by running npx cap add iOS or npx cap add Android. And at this point, we are pretty much done. We have an Android folder, we have an iOS folder, and the dist folder of our application will be synced into that folder. However, we currently don't even have that dist folder. So let's do a build, npm run build, and that should generate a dist folder with a static output of our Astro website. I will now copy that over, running npx cap copy, and that will sync the web asset directory directly into our Android app and also into the iOS app. And now I can run cap open iOS or cap open Android. So I will just try to use this um, on iOS. Why are the pods red? That's not good. Um, did I follow all the commands? I have no idea, but I will just try. I don't want to deploy to my device. Uh, I'm going with an iPhone 14 Pro. So you see, at this point, and yeah, there's definitely something wrong. So let's also run npx cap sync. That's usually required to update the native plugins and stuff. Um, so now the pods should be ready. That's like the node modules for native uh, applications. And you see at this point, I'm actually using Xcode. So I'm leaving the traditional um, web stuff. Um, I can still see my website here. It should, uh, okay, yeah, we, we killed that. So it's not running but we're not working in the browser anymore. We are now working here and voila, it took us about two or three minutes to get this set up. This is my app. It is not perfect, bear with me, um, but we could actually get around in this application somehow, although it feels like I can't click this. So let's see how we can improve our application with a few simple little changes. Actually, the first thing I want to change is I want to have live reload because building a mobile app is hard enough um, and I don't want to um, like constantly do the sync stuff in here. So what we can do is we can check out our capacitor config now and within the capacitor config file, we can add the URL where our application is running. In my case, this is my IP and we got 4321. So I'm going to add this in here. 
Then I will do another npx cap sync. Actually, I could do npx cap copy at that point just to copy over those settings for capacitor. Now, I need to make sure that my Astro application is actually running on that port. And to achieve that, you can run npm run dev, which usually gives you the development build of Astro, but you follow this up with dash 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 host. So then it will also be available on the local network. Now, if I now kill my application from Xcode and deploy it again, this should in theory load my local application. Let's see if we can confirm this. Uh, where's like the first page? Here's the index. Uh, let's change this from hello astronaut to hello Simon. Yes, <laughs> I can confirm live reload is definitely working and it's actually blazing fast because it's using Vite under the hood, I guess. Okay, cool. That's not too bad, right? So we got our app. Um, let's apply a few changes. First of all, what we always want to do is I want to go into the base head, which defines some settings for head. Now, usually for um, mobile applications that use a web view, you want to change that viewport tag to include viewport fit cover, because this allows us to actually define some additional styling for the header. As you can see, the header is behind that save area, as it's called on mobile. So I'm going into the header file as well, uh, and I'm going to try and find the header styling down here. So within here, I will just try something. Let's try padding. Um, now let's try padding top 50 pixels. Okay, so looks like we're in the right place. However, if I would do it like this, I would of course also destroy my web UI, which I definitely don't want to do. So in order to overcome this, I'm now using an environment variable. So we can use save area inset top. And first of all, on the web, everything goes back to normal. But on the simulator, we see we still have the save area applied at the top. So that is our first fix that we need. Additionally, I would kind of like to have my menu sticky at the top. So why not do this right here? Uh, position sticky top zero. And let's see if I go back to my simulator. Voila, we have a nice sticky bar up there. And I can actually navigate around in my native application. So this is really an application installed here on the simulator or I could easily deploy it um, to a real device as well. So we have fixed that part. Now, we are using Capacitor because it allows us to use native APIs in our web application. So let's actually do this. For that, I want to install two plugins. I want to install the capacitor camera and I will also install the share plugin. So that will give us a native share functionality. Therefore, let's go back to the project and let's run uh, somewhere here. NPM install capacitor share and capacitor camera. And we will see how we can use that in our application. But before we have to do NPX cap sync because when we add native code to our apps, you see, this is now actually installing that native part in our application. So both here for Android and also for iOS, it is setting this up and I need to reload my Xcode project and I also need to redeploy this. This is the same for React Native. When you include new native modules, you can't do a code push anymore. Only if you update your bundle stuff, you can do a code push. Anyway, um, we should be back in the application. Uh, why are you not loading? Did I kill the server? Yeah, I killed that. So let's reload that and let's reload my application. And here we go. Once again, we're back in the game. Now, I want to test some JavaScript and some Capacitor APIs. So for that, I created a little script. So I'm going to bring in a little folder of scripts with a share.ts file. Now, what we're doing in here is, oh, actually, I forgot to install one more package. Uh, we're going to probably talk about that in a second. Um, so I'm importing the capacitor camera and the share plugin. And I defined a share functionality, which simply makes use of that plugin. Additionally, I am trying to capture an image using the camera and then set some data to a capacitor image. And I'm just accessing all of them with a the query selector, just like shown in the Astro docs. Now I just need to include this in one of the pages. So let's go into the uh, blog post, uh, yeah, here. 
And on that blog post, I'm going to add two buttons just uh, somewhere. So this is the blog post page. And if I put something above, mm, header, main article. Yeah, if I put something in here, that's the right place. Let's see, I'm going to add two buttons in here. And I'm also going to add a bit of styling for those buttons, just so we can see them clearly. Nothing really fancy. So now we have a share button and we have a capture image button. And I will also add a capacitor image. Just something, so that has no image yet. I really wanted to do a quick and dirty example for showing you how quickly you can use Capacitor and build your native app based on an Astro web app. So we got all of this in place. And if I now hit the share button, it will use the Capacitor share API. Now inside the web, this will actually not work because on the web, we're gonna see if we check out the logs and go here, uh, that should most likely throw an error or not work at all. And capture image is also not working because there's not really any um, web interface for capturing an image. However, here in my native application, it should actually work, but I feel like I should do a little more another sync just in case something goes wrong. Uh, okay, everything is synced. I do have that new file. I hope that it's getting picked up correctly. Let's see. Um, no, nah, it's not yet getting picked up. Otherwise we would see some functionality. So, um, we do have that. Oh yeah, I forgot. We of course need to import our share. Uh, so let's go back to the blog post and import my share file and let's try again. Da -da 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 -da. This is a native share dialogue. <laughs> and we just got that through Capacitor with this simple line on the web, by the way, as I said before, this is going to fail. So if I click share, the share API is not available in this browser. I think it's actually available on Safari, but I want to take my chance. Um, additionally, let's try to capture an image. Okay, this is not working. And this is not working because we're in a native application and you have to adhere to those uh, requirements and what, what Apple or Google come up with. For example, if you want to capture images, geolocation and other stuff in a native application, you need to request certain permissions like this, the NS photo library at usage in my info P list. As a seasoned native mobile developer, you might know about this, but if you're coming from the web, that's actually hard to figure out. So let's go into the info P list, which is actually part of that iOS folder that was initially added. So we're really going into native land here. And in my info P list, I'm now going to add three different keys. These are NS camera usage description, NS photo library usage description, and NS photo library add usage description. Yes, it's really fun to develop native iOS applications. And by the way, for Android, you also need some permissions. So let's go back to the blog, to this, and let's try again. Nice, we got a sheet where we can select if I wanna capture an image or select from my photos. So this is, as you can see, coming from native land. So I will just select a photo because the simulator does not allow capturing images and boom, we have an image. Now, that was quite a lot already. Um, and all of this is working because Capacitor is under the hood using the native SDKs. It has implementations for native iOS and for native Android, and we can use it simply through JavaScript. That's the cool thing about Capacitor. Now, what happens on the web? Let's see. If I click capture image, actually nothing happens. That's a pity. So we can fix this by adding one more package from Capacitor, which is called PWA elements. And this just gives us some nice little elements like a camera overview on the web. So let's also install that right now. Okay, boom. Then in my file, I'm going to import this. Usually you're gonna have this in like at the top level inside app.tsx. So you could probably structure this a bit better in a real world example. Um, let's see, is my live reload still working? Yeah, it was close, I expected this. So let's run the dev command again. Let's go to my app again. And let's try to capture an image. Ooh, nice, I get this, that's nice. So here we go. <laughs> And I just imported an image. And this is my Astro blog website in the browser, which is using exactly the same code as the native platform. It is just using camera.getphoto. 
And this works because Capacitor is also, of course, the implementation for the web. So not just native implementation, also web implementation. But as we've seen, this requires setting some native permissions. So it is getting into an area where you need to understand a bit what's going on in native land. However, we have now quickly transformed what was before just an Astro web page into a native mobile application. With a bit of work on the styling and different other aspects, I could now easily prepare this and submit this for iOS and Android and make it available through the App Store and the Google Play Store as a native mobile application. And yes, I'm aware that once you put out stuff like this, people will eventually come after you and saying, it's weird to call an embedded website a mobile app. <sighs> Please, let's not start that war again. It doesn't matter if the result is good and it's a good result and your users like it. It's an app, like, uh, the, my mom would call this a mobile app if she can install it from the App Store. And so would many other people who are not developers. So it's only developers arguing if something is an embedded website or not. It really doesn't matter in the end if you can deliver a great result. And with Capacitor, it becomes really easy to uh, transform your epic Astro web apps into native mobile apps. With all of that being said, I want to put a little disclaimer here about a few limitations because the first thing people usually ask about are what about endpoints? That's exactly the same topic for Next.js applications. You can do this with Capacitor for Next.js as well. It's a bit more complicated, but I've done this in the past uh, as well. However, like API endpoints that you could define in your Astro applications, which is by the way, pretty cool that you can do this by now, they won't work out of the box. So what you would have to do is because we're just using um, basically a static export of our app here under the dist folder, there are no API routes. So you would have to host your Astro web app somewhere, which you, I guess, will do anyway. And then in your app, use the absolute URL to those API endpoints. And by the way, same is true for Next.js. Additionally, something I was kind of sad about is that Astro 3 comes with view transitions. So you can super easily add view transitions. Um, if you just go to, I think you just need to go to your base head file, uh, base head, and in the base head, I would just import the view transitions and then I would add a view transitions in here like this. And once you do this, uh, I think you get like, yeah, you get like instant smooth view transitions. However, you're not getting this here simply because this is Safari based. And as far as I know, those uh, still require a Chrome based um, browser so far, which eventually will change. Hopefully view transitions will arrive on iOS, which means then your Astro application will even have epic view transitions on mobile. Until then, you're gonna have to figure something out. I guess you could do something like manually with CSS to make this look a bit nicer. But yeah, that's been it. Uh, that is how you can transform your Astro, um, potentially Astro 3 application quickly into a native mobile app. If you got any questions about this, check out the other videos on this channel, which are about either Capacitor or Ionic or React Native. So everything for web developers to transform their web skills into native mobile apps. Subscribe to the channel and check out my main platforms, galaxies.dev, which is the school for React Native developers or the Ionic Academy, which is the same online school, but for Ionic and Capacitor. So hope you enjoyed this. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.